Well, for me, there are two things of importance in that, in that concern. One is that the tradition of landscape architecture is actually an art tradition. Because what we, if you would de define art as the stuff that you don't really need, you know, a house you need because you need it to protect you from weather, it, you need it to protect you from, from uh, f f your property, it needs, um, it needs all these things. So in, to a certain extent, it's a practical object, even if it's nice. A garden, in the end, as, as pictures or sculptures, I think that you don't really need, yeah? that you need on top of these bare necessities. So the, the tradition of garden architecture, of landscape architecture, always have been one, uh, a luxury tradition and not one of necessity. So uh, this tradition actually what cut, was cut a bit trying to functionalize the profession, trying to make it necessary, you know, uh, because uh, for the for for our older generations, for our forefathers, it was good to make it functional to to tell also the cities that, that they have to do certain things. But this is also right. Obviously, children need playgrounds, for example, and obviously cities need green spaces to be good cities. So there is obviously also a certain functionality in it. But as there is also in art a certain functionality to give a, or in religion to give us a, a soul to the. To things, so that is one thing that is important to understand that our tradition is actually a, a, an, an art tradition. The second thing is um, that um, that we maybe in a sense revived it and expanded. I think for us, what, what makes it maybe unusual is that we expand the possibilities that do always coming from the from the tradition of of landscape architecture and of, of, of the art and the history of it, we try to expand the possibilities that you can, what you can do with it, without having to restrict it to the, to, even to the garden or to an open space, because we also do in, indoor installations, but always with the motivation of the garden uh, uh, as an interactive piece of art, as, an, as a piece of art that uh, includes, uh, that allows you to use all your senses, you know, because Normally, art is always kind of it has only one area that it that that it, that, that it works with. It's visual, or, or it's music. It's for your ears, it's auditive, or whatever. The garden actually offers the whole range of, of possible experiences. You can smell something in the garden, you can eat something in the garden, you can see something in the garden, you can listen, you can hear something in the garden. So this kind of complete experience possibility. This I always say, gardens are like 3D movies, real 3D movies in the end, and that is what fascinates us. Uh, uh, um, how one can work with it, expanding it, because in the end it's also a very traditional and conservative profession. So without expanding it, it would be completely boring, because then it's just horticulture, then it's just flowers and, 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 and shrubs and, and plants. And so we try to expand using this, the, the history as a source, we try to expand this, um, the, the artistic aspects. Of, uh, of the tradition and the the strategy, the artistic strategies to work. That's something that also architects and other designers do. I think that uh, we, what we have been discussing before we started the interview, that people like Olafur Eliasson actually do things that are similar to what we do. So I think the artists are becoming more less artistical, and the whole design professions, including uh, uh, fashion and architecture are moving into the art sector. So I think this dissolution of borders in that respect also is part of, the, of our uh, zeitgeist, uh, I would say.